Today I'm going to be talking about scale technique. I've received a lot of viewer questions about scale technique, so I'm going to share with you the way that I teach scales at the piano when I work with my students. This is so that you can apply these techniques to your own scale playing. Stick around to the end of the video too because I've got a few bonus tips for you. Hi, I'm Dr. Kate Boyd. I'm so glad you're here. I'm a classical pianist and university professor, and I created the Piano Prof to help you take your playing to the next level. So let's get started. This is the third video in my series about scale technique and today I'm going to talk about this second principle here open and close your hand the trick to playing scales well has to do with keeping the fingers aligned while also having a flexible and nimble hand opening your hand looks like this the thumb and the fifth finger are spread apart and closing your hand looks like this the thumb and the fifth finger come together they don't literally touch when you're playing the scales but you can see that the overall shape of your hand changes when you bring the thumb and pinky toward each other so this is open this is closed this is open this is closed it's helpful to pay attention to the feeling you have in the palm of your hand whether you're making your hand feel big or small when your hand is open it's gonna feel big and when it's closed it will feel like you're making your hand small when piano students first learn how to play scales they're often taught to tuck the thumb under and pivot over the third finger the problem with playing scales like that is it results in a twisting motion You'll notice when I do that, I'm twisting, and then my elbow comes out a little bit this way, and then my finger comes out at an angle to the key, and then my thumb gets put into place, and then I come around this way. At a slow tempo, you can play, but it's a lot of at unnecessary motion that gets added. That's the reason that I teach not to pivot or to twist when you play scales. Sometimes in response to not wanting to pivot or twist when they play scales, people just keep their hand in a relatively stable position and they hop from one part of the scale to the next. This is what that looks like. You play three notes and you move your hand. Then you play the next notes and you move your hand. So at a slightly faster tempo, it looks like this. Now the reason the hopping is problematic is because you're still just basically using large muscles to hop. This time you're using your forearm and you're basically keeping your hand immobile or in a relatively fixed position. Also, hopping can cause you to make extra accents as you jump to the next hand position like this. Sometimes people combine these two motions, tucking the thumb under along with the hopping, and that's definitely a step in the right direction. But the missing piece here is the flexibility in the hand that's created by opening and closing your hand. So the way I teach scales is that you should open your hand and close your hand as you move from one hand position to the next. I'm gonna show you what that looks like. First, let's look at scales that go out from the middle of the keyboard. In the right hand, that's gonna be ascending scales. In the left hand, that's gonna be descending scales. After that, we'll look at the scales that come in and toward the center of the keyboard. The reason I'm separating the two directions is because it takes a slightly different awareness and technique depending on whether you're going up or away from the body or down or toward the body. Now here we go in our first hand position. The hand is loose, it's open, and the thumb and forefinger are relaxed, and there's an openness and relaxation to the palm of the hand. Then what has to happen is the thumb tucks under, but you're gonna close your hand. You're actually gonna make your pinky and thumb come together a little bit. This is what it looks like from, from underneath. And then you make a close the hand position. And then from there, you put your thumb into place. And then I pop my hand into position and I open it again very quickly. Close, open. Notice that I'm not twisting and my arm isn't coming out. I'm not doing this and I'm not doing this. So I'll show you what it looks like. Open, close, open, close, open, close, open. And so I'll do it without talking. A lot of times people want to keep their hand relatively inactive and what happens is you have to hop or twist 
Opening and closing your hand creates a more dynamic hand position as you play, and what you're basically doing is playing all the fingers in one hand position, closing your hand, shifting very quickly to the new hand position, and, the, and then opening, playing in the new hand position, closing, and going on. So it's more like you're, you're crawling sideways up the keyboard with your hand opening and closing, and your arm moving at a relatively regular rate. Now let's talk about how you're gonna open and close the hand when you're coming in toward the middle of the keyboard, which would be a descending scale in the right hand and an ascending scale in the left hand. So this is what it looks like when we move toward the middle of the keyboard. I'm gonna do C major here. So we come down from the top. I get to the thumb and this is where the flexibility of the thumb joint is really important. And I pass the hand over the thumb. At the same time, I'm closing the hand. This is what it looks like from underneath. Right, so I'm here, and then the second I play the next note, I put my hand into the new position. Close, open, open. So looking at it. Now what a lot of people will do is they'll twist. And we don't wanna do that, but we also don't wanna, which looks like this. I see that a lot in my students playing. And so the missing ingredient is closing the hand. It's subtle, but what I'm doing is in between, I'm doing a tiny little bit of closing, making the hand small and then large. In this tutorial, we worked first on scales going away from the body and then the scales coming toward the body. That's because the technique and approach are slightly different depending on whether you're passing the thumb under or passing your hand over the thumb. In applying this technique to your scale playing, I wanna emphasize three things that you're gonna to wanna to pay attention to. The first thing to really be aware of is alignment. You need to keep the fingers aligned with the keys. We talked before about aligning the finger to the key and having a basically straight line that goes through the key, the finger, and then all the way up the arm. That's why we wanna avoid a large pivot. You can use the concept of alignment to tell if you're opening and closing the hand correctly, because if you start to twist and break that alignment, you'll be able to see right away. So really focus on keeping this line intact. And then you tuck, and then you close, and then open, and then play the thumb and immediately pop into position. This brings me to my next point, which is that you need to pop into the next hand position. A lot of times people think that because the tempo of the notes is equal, the movement of the hand is continuous and steady. But in fact, you're, you're gonna play a few notes and then move your whole arm to a new position. And then you'll play a few more notes and then with a relatively quiet arm and then move again quickly. So it's super important, therefore, to move quickly to the next hand position and have complete clarity about where the fingers need to play the next segment of the scale. Notice I'm not playing the thumb and then just sitting around with my fingers. My fingers pop into position. And sometimes when I describe this motion, I say boom. I go boom. Right, so that I'm, I'm switching to the new position and I'm very aware that it's a quick motion. The hand is relatively immobile and very quickly everything shifts. The third thing you wanna be aware of is having flexibility in the thumb joint, especially on the scales where you come toward your body. We talked before about playing the thumb from this joint. I actually made a whole video about it. And so this is that joint, this is the third joint. When you close the hand, this joint here is moving. And so that's the joint that comes toward the pinky when you're closing the hand. Here's the flexible thumb in action. We're coming along in the scale. Now this is where there's flexibility. Notice I'm keeping the fingers aligned and I'm coming along over the thumb. The hand is closed. This is a closed hand position. Then I play the next finger and the thumb immediately pops open into place. Now the hand is open. And now here we pass over with the fingers and boom, we're in the new position. In light of everything I just showed you, I have three exercises you can do to work on this in your own scale playing. Here's an ascending scale exercise. And so what you're gonna do is play and go right there and make sure your fingers are moving right into position. So you can basically 
stop on every place that you have a new hand position. You can do this in any key. So here it is on A flat major. Every time I have a new hand position, I'm stopping, I'm popping into place, making sure my fingers are all set up for the next hand position. Now for descending scales or scales that come toward the middle of the keyboard, I have a scale exercise for you for that as well. And so come down, let's do C major. You come to your thumb and you wanna really practice making flexibility in your thumb. That's where a lot of people have tons of tension and they just are totally frozen at the thumb. So get here and just do this and then come right into position. So coming to the new position. So you're gonna go to the note after the hand position and your thumb will pop into position. My third exercise is a back and forth exercise. And what we'll do is every time there is a new hand position, I'm going two notes on either side of it. It looks like this. New hand position, two notes. And I'll do it three times. And then I continue on until the new hand position. Back and forth. As I promised at the beginning of this video, I have three bonus tips for you today. My first bonus tip is, as soon as you hit the bottom of the key, make sure to let go of the piano. Don't keep pressing down into the key. This is what it looks like when I do that. It's difficult to see from the outside whether you're pressing or letting go, but you can certainly feel if you're continuing to bear down into the keys. The reason you don't wanna do that is because you have to let go if you wanna get any kind of speed and you can't vertically push down. You have to be thinking horizontally, allowing the arms to move out and in as you open it and close your hand. My second bonus tip is to watch out for a raised pinky or fifth finger. If you're playing scales and you're raising your pinky like this, that's a sign of tension. It's a sign of finger tension and it often means that your thumb is tight or that underneath your hand is tight. So you wanna watch your fifth finger and check that it's not sticking out while you play other fingers. That habit is very common in scale playing and if you find that you're playing with a raised fifth finger, often just noticing and trying to focus on relaxing various other muscles in your hand and palm and arm until the pinky releases is enough to solve it. I have found when working with my own students that self-awareness is 90% of fixing a raised pinky. My third bonus tip is as you go toward either end of the keyboard while playing parallel scales, move and lean a little bit so that your arms and your body can stay aligned in front of the part of the keyboard you're playing in front of. If you want more technical tips from me, check out these videos over here where I lay out the top five technical things I teach my students and other technique tips. I'll see you then. In the meantime, good luck with your scale technique and happy practicing.